Hey folks! So today we're doing our first impressions on Black Geyser Couriers of Darkness, which is a CRPG inspired by games like Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, and all these kind of like old school top down RPGs. Uh, so I found out about this by watching a couple of people that I watch on YouTube uh, Wolfheart FPS and Cole Carnage. I've been getting into the Black Geyser, so I figured I'd check it out. Seems like my kind of thing. I haven't played it so far, so I've also been avoiding like uh, watching anybody properly play it. I just, you know, when I realise that certain people are talking about it, I know that I'll probably enjoy it. So you can choose a character below and customise it or create one from scratch. Golgarim, the Dwarf Highlander. Trained to fight with bludgeon weapons, he also knows how to survive out in the wilds. Quite a few here. Uh, let's let's just have a read, I guess. Lorien, the Elf Ranger, specialising in bows and pole arms. Karesh, a folded winter mage, I guess that makes like ice magic. Talented user of natural magic, he's trained to use the snow and stone wall spells. A uh, human fighter, a human necromancer, a human swindler, a human templar. A shaman. A Rillo shaman. Yeah, well, I guess we should look at the character creations and we're doing first impressions, but it's cool that we have uh, some very interesting characters to choose from right away. So what we got is in if our races go. I don't want to make this too long, so I'm not gonna I guess there's only there's only six races I could five races, I could read out some of them. Although I think we'll probably know most. Let's say let's read it anyway, we're doing our first impressions, let's do this properly. Humans were once a united tribe that roamed Yerengal for generations. The dark goddess of greed, Zor Zornel Zornelsa <laughs> fantasy names are hard to pronounce sometimes. Affected their hearts slowly with greed, avarice, and jealousy. The single tribe of man became many as they turned on one another. They warred for resources and land, forgetting their roots, their bonds were broken, and their old alliances splintered. Humans come in many different shapes and colours and can be found all over Yeringal. They're natural farmers work in the land as an artist works clay. Human versatility means that they can uh, fill virtually any role. Breaking dwarf. rock or breaking skulls, same to me. Good voice acting there. The devil god Rothgar was angry over the creation of the elves and the threat they represented to his plans to throw the world into darkness. He sent an incubus to impregnate elven women in an effort to steal the essence that lies within their wombs. The elven mothers despaired, but the green goddess told her daughters to seek the first waters of Yeringal. They did so, but were trapped in a stone cavern when Rothgar sent demons to destroy them. The children survived the attack, but their mo mothers died. Men in the mountains found the babes and raised them as their own, but the elven progeny were stunted and hairy. The children, now known as dwarves, grew and prospered, sharing the love of nature from the elven parents, but began to exhibit a preference for the depths of the world. That's a very interesting take on, on uh, the origin of dwarves. Dwarves are very materialistic but have a strong connection to clan and family. They're stout and powerfully built, well suited to exploiting the natural tunnels that form deep in the ground. See stats, I guess. Cannot be necromancer, cannot be winter mage, cannot be spell weaver, convoker, druid, templar, or cannot be a ranger. You can't be a dwarven ranger, that's interesting. Can wield war clubs and hammers regardless of class. Plus one to maximum physique, negative two to charisma, negative one to supernatural, 25% resistance to poison and acid, 20 resistances to depressive, 15 resistances to pulse and blow, 12% Dam damage with war clubs and hammers, 12% damage with battle axes, very cool, 9% uh, damage with slings and fustibals. Let's uh, have a look at the humans. I am ready for battle. 
can be any class plus negative one and maximum supernatural. So I guess their thing, their diversity is they can play any class and no real other things. That's that's very interesting. So our races here really do massively or affect. Breaking skulls, same to me. That's what we can do. Let's check the elves in. I'm, My blade I'm is by sure. This. My arrow true. So the elves can't be shamans or templars, but can be pretty much anything else. Uh, we're getting plus damage with bows and arrows, plus damage with weapons made of wood, resistance to depressive, resistance to illusion and manipulation, resistance to pulse and blow. Yeah, let's all look at the description. As the tribes of men fell to greed and the world was spoiled, the green goddess wept. The king god allowed Talinda to select a few tribes of man, those least affected by greed, to be her vassals in Isilmerado, something uh, very Tolkien sounding. Talindia chose elven tribes of man to claim as her own. Those elven tribes were come to be known as elves as time passed. Elves share a special connection with nature, feeling an inherent connection to all natural things. The generations apart from men have changed them physically. The narrow frames allowed them to move faster and quieter than men. Their ears grew pointed to better pick out distant or small sounds. The elves tend to be xenophobic and haughty towards the other races due to their chosen status imparted by Talinja. Okay, well we'll start out. Sort of know a bit about elves. Uh, most of us who play these games will be familiar with these dwarven elf races. But what about the? I bet I bet the Rillo is like hobbits because Rillo sounds very much like a halfling thing to me. But what is a fell did fell de gug? A My blade gug. is sure. My arrow true. A fell de gug is perhaps a dark elf by the looks of things. The fell de gug were once elven tribes who lived close to the north. The demigod. Dargalmir grew jealous over the love the elves showed for Telinda and imprisoned a number of elven tribes in the snowy, cold north. I guess, okay, so maybe they're like snow, dwar snow elves. He would forge his own race and command them as he saw fit, but the elves were first a creation of the God King and the Green Goddess. As they changed to survive in the north, they also realised the strength they would need to be free. Dargamar eventually realised his mistake and allowed his creation to rule the, themselves and command them to form six tribes. Drawing from the strength granted by their cold imprisonment and their god and goddess, they rebelled against their demigod. Faldegug are similar to elves but much paler. They are resistant to a hard environment who most would consider unlivable. They're rarely seen outside of their snowy northern homelands and most other races are very distrustful of them. So I guess that's kind of like a take on the Dark Elf, but it's a snow elf. Very interesting. So let's see if Rillo is like halflings. Cunning serves well, they are not. They have, they have tusks. They're like a sort of walrus man. Sort of skimtar wielding... Okay. Eastern, so they're Eastern. Travellers, traders and alchemists. From the Eastern Empires, the Rillo are a child race of a powerful djinn called Elunator. Their homeland is shrouded in mystery, so few outside the Rillo themselves know much about them. What is known is that they are seekers of pleasure and experience, consummate traders and nomadic caravanners. Rillo are large, physically imposing race who bear a passing resemblance to elephants. I guess, yeah, okay. Elephant djinn demons. They eschew religion in favour of displays of wealth and have a natural talent for brewing and drying. Wow, very interesting. Okay, so the stats are can't be ranger, templar or winter mage. Uh, maximum physique. Minus dexterity. Starting to brewing and drying, we get a little bonus. Uh, resistance to heat. Minus resistance to cold. Okay, so based on all that, what do I want to play? Uh, Let's have a look at the classes first. Well, we need to we need to pick a race before we can even look at the classes. Uh, dwarfs. I usually play dwarfs in these games, but dwarfs can't be a lot of things. Well, I guess an elf. I guess. My blade is sure. My arrow true. Intelligence clear of my guess. Oh, we can just click next to go to class. 
I guess we could try Winter Mage. I'm very, uh, very intrigued about the the Winter Mage. In the pitiless cold, I reign. There are wizards called Winter Mages who seek the mastery of the harsh magics of the cold north. They have an extremely high resistance to cold and can withstand temperatures that would kill mortal men. Because of this, they are uncomfortable in a warmer climate, but some winter mages still travel to further their knowledge. Winter mages need less sleep than other mortals using a technique they develop known as cold sleep. Powerful winter mages can use their knowledge and magical skills to craft ice columns which can serve as mighty guardians. Well, very intrigued by that. But I'm also very intrigued to play a dwarven highlander. Who dares like. stand against me? <laughs> Like I always probably would because I'm Scottish. Highlanders are hardy and strong warriors. The profession originated in the harsh north. For strong warriors... Uh, for strong warriors tough enough to resist elements. They prefer thick armour that doesn't restrict their movement and helps them blend into natural environments where they can pick up and use any weapon. They prefer the raw and crushing power of clubs and hammers. So what have we got? A cleric. The light guides me in all things. Clerics are police of faith who have taken up arms, bears serve their god, while not as combat oriented as a Templar. They can serve in other ways. Their faith today allows them to wield magical powers that can help them help them or hurt their foes. They're first and foremost servants of their gods and they harness that faith for the good of their religion. A convoke. I am never lonely. My friends await my summons. The Convoker eschews most other magical pursuits in favour of the summoning capabilities of each spell class. Convokers are versatile masters of adaption. Instead of focusing on icy grasp of a winter mage or the dark energies of a necromancer, Convokers call upon a wide range of creatures to suit any need needed task. But don't mistake their versatility as pacifism. The summoning abilities they bring to bear can rain destruction on their enemies through claw, flame or steel. So. What was it? What was it that I couldn't be as a? Let me see. A shaman or a templar? I can't be a shaman or a templar. Okay. Does it tell me about the shaman and the templar? It doesn't. So if I can't be some, so I guess we've got all these: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve plus shaman and templar. So we have fourteen classes. Uh, Nature is my province. Druids, like rangers, are stewards of the wild. Uh, use their faith in the wild gods to protect nature against encroachments of man. Spend their days away from the people so that they can stay in nature. Call upon the powers of their day to heal, to bring terrible and powerful force to nature. I think we all sort of know what druids are, but it's good to see that this is this deep like there's a lot of my blade is sure fighters training my for end. very versatile profession and the most common of all martial professions fighters are proficient with all weapons so an armor making them a deadly and well prepared combatant well i'm going to end up sinking a hell of a lot of my time into this game i think trying all these classes uh okay we also know what necromancers are but i've never really played door. a necromancer in any game i've always kind of been intrigued to do it in an rpg sometime yeah an mmo Necromancers are viewed by society in a negative light, shunned due to their proximity to death. That said, necromancers understand that a dead body is just a vessel, and they've learned to use death and its trappings as tools. They pursue great mysteries which others have shunned and deemed immoral, but necromancers are not evil. They're merely focused on the inherent powers of life and death, sometimes even more than their own existence. Because of this, powerful necromancers are extremely rare sight, but the most powerful are said to have transcended death and can even create powerful undead servants. Yep, classic necromancer. Stats. Oh damn, so much to read here. Can only wear robes by default, can wear light armor if supernatural is greater than two. Can wield the following weapons, slings and fustibles, thrown weapons, rods and staffs, small blades. Focus to racial base, intelligence base. God, this is deep stuff. Maybe I need to do this first impression, just the first impressions of the character creation. I shall be your guide to the wilds of Yerengal. To the wilds of Yerengal. Rangers are warriors who feel most at home in the heart of the wild. 
and pledged to protect Yerngal from man and beast alike. They're sworn to preserve a balance between man and nature. They enforce this with their actions. Rangers are skilled in the use of any weapon but excel with a bow. They also abhor that they are natural and are trained to take down the undead and other aberrant creations of men. Spell Weaver. The wise shall fear my spells. Spell Weavers are the most common form of wizards in Yerngal. They are as varied as the world itself. Spell Weavers focus on exploring as many of each magical discipline as possible. Thus, no two Spell Weavers are the same. All they share in common is an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. Spell Weavers are much too busy studying their arcane to bother with martial training and as such rely on their mastery of eldritch magics to protect them. How does this stat differ then from a necromancer? Pretty similar to the necromancer. Uh, almost exactly the same. The stats wise. So I guess we have like let's check uh let's check the Highlanders stats. Who dares stand against me? Okay, so resistance is deep. Resistance to poison and acid. So if you're if you're playing like a dwarven Highlander, certain races are definitely going to be suited to certain classes. That's cool, I like that. Okay, so let's see a swindler. Keep your eyes on the coin. Where on light is armor. Uh, that's down bonus to Bruin and Dryan, so I guess if you're playing a a Rello Swindler, it's be like a fun thing to do. Swindlers are master con men. They focus less on outright burglary and more on manipulating the weak or greedy. Unlike thieves, swindlers hide in plain sight. Because of this, they're better in open combat while their plans and machinations unfold in the shadows. How does a thief differ from a swindler? The shadows are my home. Come, let me show you. Come, let me show you. In a world infested with greed, the thief has become much more common. Their skill set is diverse and they can function as common footpads or royal spies. They prefer subterfuge and misdirection to open conflict. Their ability to steal or plant items, remain undetected and create all manner of powders makes them a deadly and unpredictable foe in or out of combat. So I guess more like the classic rogue then. And we already looked at the winter mage. So on top of that we've got, let's, uh, let's go back so we can have a look at... I am ready for battle. The shaman and the, a temp, I guess a templar is basically. Alnarius shields the righteous. A cleric, but more and more a battle cleric. Templars are human warrior priests, the most devout of their kind, and only the most dedicated can become a templar. Sworn to a strict code of conduct, they train endlessly in combat, so they might fight evil. So I guess kind of like a paladin then. What are their stats? Can wear any physical armor, can wield any weapon, gain spells at level 4. Okay. And the shaman. I walk with the spirits. Their the wisdom armor robes. will serve you well. Okay. Shamans are beings of faith who channel their power in an unusual manner. They attempt to connect with their deity on a spiritual level and can communicate with spirits and other servants of their god. Shamans have access to a kind of magic that's not easily understood by wizards or priests. They use an ancient magic and their ability to travel with their non-physical souls to further their communication with their god tends to confuse more short-sighted magical practitioners. Okay, well, yeah, this is going to eat up a hell of a lot of my time over the next while because I'm very interested in a lot of these classes and race types. But I think for the sake of getting this started... In the pitiless cold, I reign. So that's given me that's given me concept art or like uh, art for a human ma a human uh, winter mage. Oh wait, wait if I go back because I want to be uh, Feldegard. My blade is sure. My arrow mage. true. In the pitiless cold, I reign. God, it has a, it has a different voiceover for every race class combination. Very cool. Uh, again, before we go any further, because <laughs> this is a first impressions, let us have a listen to the dwarf. Breaking Highland. rock or breaking skulls, same to me. The dwarven Highlander. Who dare stand against me? 
<laughs> yeah, well, my second character is going to be a Dwarven Highlander. Uh, first one, well, I want to see this winter magic. Snow, snow and ice magic always looks real cool. My blade is sure, my arrow true. So let's do a Feldegug winter mage. In the pitiless cold, I reign. I already like the look of him. I'm liking the look of the artwork as well. Very, very cool artwork. Classic high fantasy. Yeah, I'm already very, very excited about this. Okay, so physique displays a character's overall physical building state. A character's value in physical modifies their damage dealt with physical attacks, their maximum health value, ability to evade incoming attacks through blocking and their carrying capacity. So we have 20 points to distribute. Oh, exciting. Exciting. Physique. So... Intelligence displays the character's ability to think, plan and use a logical different situations. A character's value and intelligence modifies the efficiency of various spells and skills. Okay, so we need, we need a high intelligence. Let's put... What is the maximum actually? Let's, let's the maximum is 15. Okay, okay, right, that's good to know. Uh, yeah, to have that in max. Focus. Focus displays the character's overall mental strength and resilience. A character's value and focus modifies their aim and accuracy value, their ability to evade incoming attacks through dodging and blocking, and reduces the chance of their actions being interrupted by incoming damage. So, aim and accuracy. Oh, we still have like skills and appearance and everything to look at. I guess I'm going to do this in multiple parts because like this is this is deep. There's a lot going on here. Supernatural displays a feature of characters that elevates them above ordinary creatures. The value of su supernatural increases a character's resistance values against various forms of damage, enables further speci special abilities for warriors and outlaws, and increases the number of elevated energy slots for wizards and priests. Okay, we will, I guess we want some supernatural about this. Let's Three supernatural resistance. Uh, okay, so I could, I could have five percent resistance to all, or fifteen to one. Uh, I'm just going to go for the. the ca I guess if we make mistakes, we'll make another character because this is going to take forever. Uh, I'm going fifteen percent cold. No wait, ten percent. 15's a bit much, and let me do two here, and let me get three here. That's at least very resistant to some degree of those ones. Uh, damn, this is probably the deepest character creation I've ever seen. Dexterity displays a character's agility. A character's value in dexterity modifies their aim and accuracy. Chance to evade you. We want, I guess we want some dexterity. Characters. Charisma offers a character's bargain and persuasion skills. We don't really care for that if we're a caster. We've got enough supernatural. Uh, dexter I guess we should put dexterity 10 and then the rest into physique. So 7, 9, 15. Okay, so they're, they're my starting stats for this. If it, does, if, it, if, it's like a, if it doesn't work out, I can always reroll another character. Okay, skills and spells, points to distribute one in each. And two points for initial spells. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. The replayability is already ridiculous for me. Uh, I mean, the game might suck, but the character creation so far is everything I want from an RPG. Right, bargaining, persuasion, learning and research. So we already have we already have four learning and research. Brewing and drying. Uh, I'm going. I'm going. Learning research. I don't care about oh, bargaining persuasion. No, I'm going learning research. I'm a pure mage. Class specific. Prodigy enables additional dialogue choices themed around wizardry. Each point of charisma increases this skill by 1.5 percent. Damn, this is deep. Each point of focus increases the skill by 0.5. Each point of prodigy increases the skill by 4%. Total 30.5%. Okay, arcane studies. Enhances aptitude for elevated energy level spells, both increasing available casting slots for such spells, as well as decreasing the time needed to rest between casting them. 
So I guess we want this. Yeah, let's just. I guess I'll read it all. Cool down between elevated energy spells is decreased by up to 50%. Each point of focus increases this by one. Each intelligence increased by one. Each point of arcane studies by four. Okay, so yeah, let's get arcane studies for that then. So now our arcane studies 34. Okay, magical perception. Offers the ability to actively sense and disable hidden traps in the world. Traps sense and disarm using magical perception. Skill must be at least of magical nature. Sensing traps is easier than disarming them. Each point of focus, so we've already got 34 now, we're good. Magical Warden, we have 30. Offers ability to erect a barrier of arcane force around camp on resting outdoor locations. Such a barrier will discourage wandering beasts and bandits from approaching the camp. Decreasing the chance for the group to be attacked during their rest. Decreases the chance for an ambush and the minimum distance needed for hostile creatures to rest by up to 50%. Okay, yeah, so... So like I'm saying, this is... This is this is deep character creation, but awesome. I'm loving it. So, oh, we got to choose our weapons right now. Uh, well, so, what do I want? Small blades or rods and staves? Well, a wizard should be using a staff first and foremost, so let's go rods and staves. Defines the cards that we have staffs. Rods and staffs increase the user's aim and accuracy with them. Staffs are. Average speed weapons deal mostly pulse and blow damage each point. Okay, so we're better, best with staffs. Now what do I want? Death Pulse. This spell conjures a wave of necrotic energy around the caster. Damaging anyone caught in it deals 5 to 16 poison and acid damage to the target skills up to level 9. Poison Weapon. The spell enchants the caster. Okay, so... Death Pulse. 15 to 16 poison damage, uh, yeah, poison weapon. Spell enchants the caster's magic. Ca this spell enchants the caster's attacks with magical poison, making opponents think twice before approaching them. Chance to apply poison on hit for 15 seconds, 75%. So, I guess we would definitely want snow. Because we're an ice mage. Conjure the very elemental essence of cold, then throw it at someone you don't like. Deals 3 to 12 cold damage. So yeah, let's take that. Stone wall. Sometimes all you need is a good thick wall to solve your problems. Creates one of those which blocks movement scales up to level 9. I don't know if I want stone wall. Predator's fangs. This spell lets the user tap into the life force of the target to the next attack, restoring their own health. Next attack steals life. Next attack deals four more skills up to level nine. So okay, well we definitely want that then if it's gonna be like a healing spell. Alright, let's take Predator's Fans and Snow. Death Pulse would be pretty cool for the extra DPS, but I think Predator's Fangs for the healing is going to be the best option. Uh yeah, okay. <clears throat> Appearance, skin color. Yeah, we want blue skin because we're we're we want white hair. So snow mage eye color. Let's go blue. Mage color. Azure. Teal azure. Yeah, we're all all the blues. Fa hairstyle. Yeah, let's go classic mage. Now let's give him a beard also. <laughs> Basically Gandalf the Frost Mage. Portrait. Um there aren't any of those portraits that really suit, but uh, let's go with Let's go with this one. <clears throat> so here are all our, here's our skill sheet. Name the voice. Hmm. Yeah. It's nice to be needed. Could go be a scholar. Yes. 
I'm not going to like this, am I? Oh no, I don't like that. Gallant. I await your instructions. Don't like that either. Speak your mind. Yeah, that'll do. Oscar. Oscar. E Evald. Gunliath. Well, I'll use my always wizard name. Hilarious. Used that in, for many mages in the past. Okay, so classic veteran courier. You want some real challenge, and it says it all in capitals. You do not have any rules. It says them all in capitals. <laughs> yeah, let's just go with classic difficulty. So here is uh, everything we need to know, everything we've picked so far. Let's just start the game. Would you like to enable main quest guidance? You can change this later in the settings menu. Yes, I need some guidance. <coughs> the Espen Estate. In your inventory, you can split an item stack in half by using control and left click. Similarly, we're not going to get to find out what similarly shift does. Well, we're starting in a mansion house. Ah, oh, why didn't I look here first? And more to the point, why must I come fetch you for every little thing? It's cool that we have uh, voice acting. Can I? Uh, I guess one of the options I can make this smaller. I don't want the dialogue thing so big. It doesn't need to be this big. Yeah, uh, but it's fine. Okay. So, sorry. Who are you supposed to be? Sorry. What am I supposed to be doing? Share, share, mom away. So, why is it coming fetch me all the thing? Who, who, are you, who are you supposed to be? Har har! You are so very droll. Oh, you'd better hope Lord Espen is in as good a humor today. You do know this is the day the Lords of Isselbright are visiting. Oh, please, don't answer. The Lords are already here and waiting to be served. And for goodness sake, don't forget to gather your things from your chest before you come to table. I'm glad it's voice acted so I don't have to read everything out. I guess it's not totally voice acted. Probably would be a bit much to ask. Okay, so ah, right, right away it's pretty pretty close to him. Can't move the camera. If you insist. But can't move the character. Talk to these people. Yeah. Should you be serving drinks for lords already? Ah, so we can look around. There's a cat. You've received a quest to inspect the objectives on or your progress during your quest. Click the operations button on the user interface or press zero. So the Lords and Ladies of Isselbright arrived for an important conference in my Lord's estate. I was given the duty of seven drinks throughout the evening. I really should not mess this up. Day zero hour zero. The whole day was a rush and so lords and ladies arrived. I should get inside before I get into trouble with my lord. I need to report to Belene in the meeting room. I might also want to collect my things from my chest before doing that. What side quests? Okay, we don't have any side quests. This is our main quest. Do we have a map? We do have a map. Cool. Orb of mesmerizing colors. Where are you going to see that? The south gate. The main gate. We do have this, this as far as we can zoom in. Okay, so we can zoom out. I do like it when a game lets you zoom in closely. It's not giving us any ability to shift the camera, but other than that, I'm pretty cool with the graphics. The visuals look good. It's running smooth enough. Let's investigate this. Let's 
globe reveals the kaleidoscopic swirling colours and vapours mesmerising the viewer. Ok, well, let's just go inside that. I suppose while we're exploring we should use a more zoomed out view and in combat eh, maybe a more zoomed in view because we're kind of closer closer suite, library, my room, so I guess I'll go there and get my stuff first, butlery, kitchen and meeting room. So where's my room? This one? Here's the chest. Do I want to click that far? It appears to work. Scholar's stick, a magic staff, price 110 and 1 to 6 damage, 4 second attack, cool, 22 gold coins, an old damp robe, which looks like it's what I'm already wearing, uh, take uncommon, take all. To equip an item in your character, you first have to open the inventory screen by clicking it. She's okay, so I on the keyboard. We already have an old damn robe. Right, let's equip the staff. Very cool. No, I'm already loving this. Uh, yeah, this is definitely inspired by games like Neverwinter Nights and Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale and all those classics. Thick leather boots. 25 gold, that's a good price for a leather boot. And how much my robe worth? The, oh, the robe is only worth 10. <laughs> Go to the meeting room to find Baleen. You can check her location by opening the map again. I think the meeting room is over here. Let's just look for Baleen. Oh, we'll have a map down here as well. Yeah, this is the meeting room. This is where we are. If you insist. <laughs> nice fireplace. Uh, okay, so it's Berlin. No. Here's Belene. Hello! At last! Ugh, don't go twisting an ankle in all your hurry. You take care of the drinks. Lord Wolcraft and Lady Larenthal prefer wine. Lord Joran would like ale. Lady Virulin and Lord Espen want mead. Go! Okay. 